Hello again, the practitioner here, continuing on part two of my uh, uh, of my evaluations of pros and cons. Now, um, for the pros of popular um, debunk TV shows, um, you get a lot of experts out uh, from both sides of the field. Uh, you get and you do manage to bring up a lot of ideas, which are some good food for thought, um, especially when studies are quoted secondhand and the like. Um, you know, at least at least you are at least it is a good way to make people aware of stuff. The problem uh, with uh, popular TV shows in the current format is that, um, and this is my, and this is uh, another con uh, in my book, is the fact that the, um, I'm trying to put this as best as possible without, um, you know, without uh, inadvertently, well, without inadvertently swearing or getting angry about this, because, uh, but anyway, the problem which I've had with a large chunk of the uh, TV shows like Penn and Teller's Bullshit um, or a large chunk of what um, constitutes for popular debunking on TV is the fact that, um, with the exception of Mythbusters, which sometimes will even run up to two to three hours to make sure there is actually enough time available to uh, test a myth, properly cover it, um, you know, they're a scientific testing show, which is actually one of the reasons I'm glad that they do what they do. Um, but that being said, um, with the likes of Penn and Teller bullshit and the stuff, um, and again, mind you, they are pretty well the only program out there which actually does what they do because, uh, again, they're, they're a prototype. But um, they work just as well as a perfect example. Anyway, um, the one thing which really annoys me about this is the fact that they limit um, every episode to a single topic. The problem with this is the fact that half of the, half the topics which they actually cover are so complicated that they end up missing crucial data in the process. Um, you know, uh, crucial data which um, may actually uh, further support their position or may actually require further assessment to be able to um, to be able to do a proper uh, you know, a proper uh, analysis. For example, um, the conspiracy theory episode where um, Penn and Teller tried to debunk all conspiracy theories in one fell swoop. This was reasonable, except for the fact that some of them, uh, you know, some of them are blatantly, uh, you know, can be easily debunked right off the bat. However, others have way too much complicated info in them and should require a separate uh, show in their own right. Um, the Big Brother show had a, uh, the, uh, the Big Brother um, uh, show, uh, you know the Big Brother topic got a show in its own right, which was um, w um, and even there they failed to mention. You know I think that one should have been a two-parter show because there were a couple of things that were uh, failed to be mentioned in there. For example, the um, uh, the fact that now that the Patriot Act is in, um, you know it still allows for the government uh, or for uh, you know for a small amount of people in the government or even some overzealous bureaucrat to take advantage of it. And so Big Brother could become a possibility. Uh, not from the entire government standpoint, but the fact that uh, some, you know, it's sort of like a, uh, it's sort of like a powder keg as opposed to a direct Big Brother, but it, it has the potential to become one, and that's what, um, and that's what I think that uh, Penn and Teller failed to mi uh, mix, uh, sorry, failed to uh, cover, was the, uh, the threat, you know, the actual likelihood of a government, uh, you know, of, of or of an element of the government trying to take advantage of democracy or supplanting it by use of the Patriot Act, <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, yes, we have an incompetent government who didn't even read. Uh, sorry, yes, the U.S. have a, had an incompetent government who didn't read it before they signed it. But you know, the question is, well, what about success, successor governments or or elements within the governments who might be competent? A minority can over um, a, a competent minority can often supplant an effective majority. But anyway, that's another one. Um, another one which I thought would have been more appropriate for a full episode in its own right was the 9/11 conspiracy theory, the uh, twin towers uh, falling, that sort of thing. Um, when they did the 15-minute debunk that they did on it, or actually it was a 10-minute clip, um, they did a lot of work um, debunking all the physical conspiracy theories, uh, basically the planted explosive charges and all that. That was all well and good, and that was very effective for what they did in 10 minutes. However, unfortunately, there's a bit more info that goes into greater detail, and that's why that show requires a half hour. Um, the CBC's The Fifth Estate, when they did a debunk on that one, took, a, took at least a, a good hour and a half to evaluate all data on this point. Um, and actually, that's where a large chunk of where I got my data from, um, which led me to suspect that there may have been a small group of elites who may have actually had a hand in this, just besides um, uh, Osama and the like. Um, also, as well, a large chunk of the argument that was ended up being done at the end was much more from an emotional standpoint, and large chunks of arguments um, in favor of the Patriot Act and, um, you know, on behalf of 9-11 have been made, at least in part, from emotional standpoints, and that's why I'm thinking that, you know, this issue could do with a, a full show in its own right. For example, um, one other element which is not covered in the conspiracy theory episode um, pertaining to Penn and Teller's uh, was the fact um, was the 
fact that all the bin Laden relatives were flown out um, were flown out uh, immediately after 9/11, uh, despite the fact that all other air traffic had been shut down. Um, you know, and considering whether or not uh, Osama's family might have had some sort of connection, you know, they could have provided a useful uh, insight as to where he kept his finances, maybe how to freeze uh, Al Qaeda's assets, you know, that sort of thing. Um, another thing which is interesting is the fact that um, there is um, there was evidence to show that on the day uh, that uh, on 9/11, um, George Bush Sr. and a uh, one of the Bin Laden family were at a conference together, um, dealing with uh, economics in the Middle East and you know discussing stuff. Another thing they don't tell you is the fact that the Bush and the Bin Laden families um, have actually had a um, have actually had business contacts ever since the 1980s. Um, another thing, Osama bin Laden was actually a former CIA operative. Um, he was actually trained by the U.S. to go out get out against the Russians before he went rogue. Um, uh, what else? Uh, the fact um, that Figaro, a right-wing Italian newspaper, which generally was pro-U.S., uh, released an article um, a little ways uh, a, a month or so after 9/11, which had said that um, that French intelligence had picked up that a CIA that a CIA operative had visited Osama bin Laden in Dubai, where he was receiving medical treatment five months before the actual Twin Tower attacks. Now, does this mean that the entire government's involved in the conspiracy, or you know that um, that uh, the, the in, in some sort of conspiracy to kill their own citizens? Not necessarily, but consider this. George W. Bush, um, along with his family, do have strong interests in Halliburton. And considering the fact that Enron's going on, or considering, uh, you know, the, considering the, 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 the heck, you know, considering the, the tetchiness of international um, business relations, particularly in that part of the world or other stuff like that, um, or, you know, some corporations needing a, um, you know, needing a way to, you know, feeling that they're losing control of the market and needing a better way to seize control of the citizens, could easily have, um, you know, uh, could easily have told a CIA operative who probably didn't even know any, uh, know any better, um, you know, uh, to go and speak uh, to Osama bin Laden and get him to, you know, orchestrate the attack. The terrorists who flew the planes into the buildings, the people, and even the most of the government would have been, uh, and you know, and and the government would have all been played for the fool. Um, you know, all honestly believing in what they were doing or, or what have you, um, all misdirected away from some other possible power. Now, mind you, of course, there is in, this is in part speculation, but the point is that this data, um, you know, this other data, which could allow for the speculation, was not covered in the show, hence why 9-11 as a conspiracy theory um, should have had its own entire episode or more, um, like Brig Brother did. And this is what um, is what annoys me a bit to a certain extent um, pertaining to shows like this. And again, I've, as I've said before uh, in the previous part, not providing references is also another problem, owing to the fact that you can have your expert versus their expert, and um, without actually taking, without actually providing references as to where the studies are, um, or what methodology went into the studies, or what have you, um, a, a show like that could come across as an appeal to authority. So, say for example, um, uh, yeah, okay. Say, for example, Penn, a, a typical episode, Penn and Teller make a case saying that whatever they're talking about is bullshit. So they come out and say, uh, okay, um, we've decided this is bullshit, so we're only going to agree with experts who happen to be on our supporting side. And, um, and from the way that it comes across, um, you know, I mean, like, they will quote studies, but, you know, it's, it's all in abstract. Um, you know, both sides may quote studies, both sides may quote data. Um, sometimes the uh, the experts on uh, Penn's side will actually quote more uh, more studies than the the side they're trying to debunk. But you know that being said, I mean the point is that they don't actually provide any references to any of these studies, so it could come across as appeal uh, as an appeal to authority um, fallacy. Um, not to mention the which um, again possible straw man attacks. You know again this is where methodology comes in. So pros of doing a show like this, great. You can get a lot more um, stuff debunked and hopefully a lot more stuff covered. Cons. Um, you know, not enough provi uh, providing of references, not enough going into greater detail of um, uh, of subjects which may actually be uh, more complicated than a single show can cover. Um, for example, the Endangered Species Act, um, environmentalism, uh, um, require um, actually well, environmentalism was a blunder in its own right, but I already dealt with that. Um, the uh, the issue pertaining to the 9/11 uh, conspiracy theory, um, which should have had an entire episode in its own right. Um, oh God, what else? Uh, I'm just trying to think of others um, which could have had two parters. Um, every video I've replied to from Penn and Teller bullshit um, 
if, if you see a reply on my videos which says read Penn and Teller something, chances are that means that that episode could have done with a two-parter at least. Well, that's my thoughts. Toodles!